Hello everybody, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I wanted to do a quick video on how to tear your own large sheet of watercolor paper. Uh, we're going to focus on tearing it into quarters. It's an important skill to have. It's more economical rather than buying pads of paper. And it lets you know about the quality and the texture and the content of your paper. Now with this, the first most important thing is to wash your hands. If you have lotion, oils, anything on your hands, it'll create areas of resistance and it will create splotchy areas whenever you paint on it. The second thing is to not be as stressed out as you would be about tearing a piece of paper. It's really easy. Um, I'll explain in a moment about mat sizes and whatnot and how you can have a little bit of leeway with messing up. The third thing you need to keep in mind, this is Stonehenge Aqua 140 pound cotton. Different materials seem to tear differently. 30, 300 pounds seems to tear differently than 90 pounds. So experiment. Um, and last but not least, don't worry if your tears aren't perfect. A uh, little art lesson. Just recently, I believe they tied together two Cezanne paintings through an irregular tear along the edge. They recognized the one tear, recognized another, and realized it came from the same sheet of paper. So anyway, what I do is this. I take my long way, which is 30 inches. I don't measure anything out. I just fold it in half. And I try to eye the corners. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'll explain why in a moment. And then I usually stand up and do this, or I'm sitting down doing it, and I'll pinch it out to get that nice edge. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can put it down on a table and flatten it out if you want. You could put a ruler on that middle area and bend there. Those thin metal rulers probably work really great for that, but I've never tried that. Now the thing is, this is your 30 inches, this is 15. The standard mat is a 14 inch opening. That's one inch difference. So you have a leeway of half an inch that you can make a mistake with here. If you're working in centimeters, that's 1.3 centimeters leeway that you could be off on this side. So you really don't have to stress, stress out about that first one. Then, I fold it back and forth a few times. You could do this flat on a piece of on a table. Yeah, I'm pretty tall, so I can do this. I believe whenever I first started tearing paper, the video that I watched, the woman had said about eight times. I do that. Sorry for the bell. I start a little tear on top, put it down hand here, I grab a side, and I start pulling like that. You can use the edge of a table and tear it down along that. That'll help as well. If you start to get an irregular tear you don't like, hypothetically if it went off the edge here, I can then go to my other side and try to correct it in that fashion. And there we go. Now we have a, what would this be? This is 22 by 15. We're going for a quarter sheet. If we fold it in half, we're going from 22 to 11. This is really easy to line up. And it's the exact same process. What I do, what I recommend doing is uh, practicing this. You will make a few mistakes. You will get a few irregular tears. But like I said, in the long run, this saves a lot of money. Um, and it really lets you start working in different sizes. If you want, I'll film some videos on how to tear some other shapes from this. So now we have a quarter sheet, 11 by 15. If we had put a mat over it, the opening would be about here. And it would come up to about this edge and down to that edge and you have a nice torn piece of paper. So uh, please like, subscribe, follow. Um, if you have any other techniques or hints or suggestions for uh, tearing paper, let me know down below in the comments. And I'll see you all soon. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, take care.